Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Korlick with Figure It Out Productions. The following video is part of our quick shoot series and is intended to aid the Dreamcast and gaming community. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and today I got a package I'm going to open up for you. It comes from Germany, and it's a brand new Sega Dreamcast game. My favorite game console of all time, in case you're unaware, still gets brand new games every once in a while. However, they don't come from Sega or any other big company. They come from independent developers and publishers. Basically, just guys who have a passion for games, and they want to make games, and they choose the Dreamcast as one of their platforms of distribution. Now, if that sounds kind of familiar, it's because... Well, only about a week ago, at the time I put this video out, I made a video very similar to this on a brand new Dreamcast game called Ghost Blade. You can see that if you want over here, over there, wherever I put it. Uh, so the point is, the Dreamcast still gets new games, and lately it's been more frequent, which is awesome. And I have, I th I'd like to discuss why I think that is, however, that would really bog this video down, so I, you guys tell me. I, I'm kind of interested in doing a discussion video about the Dreamcast scene and why I think it's been gaining some momentum lately. Uh, if you want to hear about that, just tell me about it in the comments. But let's move on to, to this, the game specifically. So, like I said, this brand new game just came out. Let's open it up and take a look at it here. Uh, shipped out of Germany, as they usually do. Most Dreamcast games seem to be produced there. Uh, the game is this. Fruity is what it's called. A um, little, little bit of information on this game. This game comes from a company called Retro Guru. Now, Retro Guru... Uh, came onto the Dreamcast scene a couple of years ago, as I recall, and I remember when they first started talking about making Dreamcast games, a lot of the questions that people had, including myself, was, are you going to be you know, doing this on press discs, or are you using CDRs? Now, for those who don't know, these new Dreamcast games are not just some guy burns it on a CD and mails it to you. They're made in factories. They're pressed on machines. They're professional and legitimate. And their original answer was, no, we're not going to use press CDs. We are going to use CDRs because we can't afford press discs. And a lot of people's reaction was, oh, okay, thanks. Because if it's not on a press disc, then it just doesn't come off as anything really worth spending any money on. That's just how people feel, myself included. Um, so it was a real shocker when they announced this game and said it was on a press disc, which I will check real quickly. Yep, I can confirm it. It is on a press disc. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, so, yeah, that was a bit surprising, uh, but the other thing that was really interesting about this game is how it came about. Um, a lot of Dreamcast games in the independent scene will be announced and then available for pre-order years before they come out. Years! It's just an accepted thing. Uh, for example, Ghost Blade was announced and available for pre-order suddenly, and, but you had to wait years for it to actually get made and come out. Some games will go through Kickstarter, and then you know, you'll fund them there, you'll basically pre-order it through Kickstarter, and then years will go by before it comes out. That's usually how it happens. Or games will be announced, no money is collected, they just tell you, alright, here's our game, and it'll be available in like three or four years or whatever, and then at that time you can buy it. Those are typically the ways this happens. This one, on the other hand, just appeared and said, not only is the game done, but you can buy it right now and we'll just ship it to you. Which was really surprising. Uh, the only other game that's ever done that, as far as I know, for the Dreamcast scene was Alice's Mom's Rescue, which I, I did a video about as well, if you're interested. Very surprising that that happened. And the other thing that was amazing about it was the method by which it came out. See, this game apparently was given away for free at a convention in Linz, Austria. Now, I was just in Austria. In fact, I was in, that's where I got this shirt, no kangaroos in Austria. I was in Linz for a week and a half. <laughs> Shout out to my buddy Ronald who lives there, who invited me out there. It's amazing, they apparently had some convention where they were giving this thing away. So now you're thinking, well, if it was free, how much did it cost to buy this time when you actually had it shipped to you? That's the other thing. This is a three euro game. That's like three and a half dollars US. Plus shipping, which was actually more, it was about five euros. So all, all in all, you're talking like not even ten dollars for this brand new game. So even if the game sucks, which hopefully it doesn't, uh, that's not any big deal. It's just awesome to support the Dreamcast scene and get a brand new title like this. Um, especially because it's not a shmup. That's, a, that's the other thing in the Dreamcast scene that's kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't type of thing. Uh, most Dreamcast games that come out are shmups. Shmups are like Ghostplay. They're little, you know, they're, they're games where the, you play as a ship and you shoot at, you know, tons and tons of mass amounts of opponents. That is the most common genre on the Dreamcast uh, scene. And 
I think the reason for that is because they're the only ones that sell worth a damn. Whereas when they put out puzzle games, they put out racing games, they put out you know uh, adventure games or whatever, people go like, oh, that's finally, finally, we get a new one. That's what I wanted all along. Are you going to buy it? No, I'll wait. The only ones people tend to buy are the shmups. So it's like, of course, if that's what you buy, that's what they're going to keep making. So with this one, you can support a, uh, a new puzzle game for the Dreamcast, and it's super, super cheap. It's, like I said, you know, even if it sucks, it's not any real great loss. However, hopefully it doesn't suck. Uh, but let's take a look at the game itself here. There's, of course, the front art there. And there's the back. And there is the spine. Very nice. On the spine, it actually denotes that it's for the Dreamcast, which is interesting because a lot of Dreamcast games, uh, independent ones, have don't really ever make high mention of the fact that it's for the Dreamcast. It's usually in some like obscure little spot, so it's cool they put that. It's probably some sort of legal reason for that. Although I got to give credit to Sega because they allow people to do this to make new games for the Dreamcast. They don't make any money off of it. They don't do anything about it. They just ignore it and don't care. And you got to give them credit for not trying to interfere. Uh, now, if we open it up, there is no manual to this release. Probably part of the reason it was so cheap uh, is that it, they didn't even bother making a manual. It's just I have no complaint about that if it's only going to cost you know ten dollars. And of course, the disc itself, which is very very nice. You might have noticed it was not wrapped in cellophane either. That's probably another cost-cutting measure, uh, just to you know to make the game cheaper, which. I, I think ultimately I'm fine with because obviously the game arrived in perfectly fine condition. So we're going to go ahead and uh, show some gameplay here. Now, of course, this is the Retro Guru logo. I had never actually seen it in action before, so it's very cool to see that on a game. I also never saw this before, uh, a flat-out description about uh, this project uses code from the following open-source projects in an unmodded form. SDL, SDL Mixer, you know, like, you can read the whole thing for yourself. It's just interesting like that and uh, it says it's like a you know version 1.00 I can't help but wonder if they're ever going to re-release this game in some sort of updated form uh, but anyway you saw the title screen it has all sorts of different options I didn't really go into that uh, so yeah it's a puzzle game and it took me this is actually my second playthrough here um, I didn't finish the game of course but I could not figure out for the life of me what you're supposed to do initially uh, and I didn't want to show you that because it wasn't that interesting so eventually I did figure it out now the goal uh, in case it's not obvious to you, is that you're supposed to make the left screen look the same way as the right screen. Now, uh, so, for example, uh, you see how there's like four bananas on the right there? You have to basically group them the same way. And by doing that, you know, and clicking on the certain item, you can make all the pieces fall into the correct place. Now, obviously, as you go on further and further, uh, the puzzles become more complex and it's hard to figure out. Also, that center row thing in the middle will tell you what order the fruits will change when you click on them. So when you click on a fruit, it will affect some of the ones around it as well as in addition to the actual the one you're clicking on. So that's what makes the game um, difficult. Uh, now you're going to see me kind of powering through here as if it's like super easy, but it, it wasn't. Uh, I cut out all the times I lost, um, and ultimately I think I got to like the sixth, or no, sorry, the twelfth level before I was just like, all right, I, <laughs> I was stumped and I was just like, all right, I'm not going to spend all day on this. I have other things I got to do. But uh, I, I will tell you, I think this game is actually pretty fun, especially given the price tag of it. It's uh, I would definitely look into it. I think it's pretty neat. Um, now, for the record, because I know this comes up uh, in a lot of every time I make a, a video about independent Dreamcast games, I get some of the following questions. One. Uh, is it region free or do, does it only work on certain consoles? The game is region free, so if you have a European console, an American console, Japanese console, you could pop it in. You don't have to do anything, there's no modding or anything, you, you don't need any boot disks, it'll work just fine. All Dreamcast independent games are region free. Uh, secondly, uh, people, I don't know why people ask this, but people ask, you know, like, uh, does it work with the VMU, does it work with the memory cards, can you save? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can do that. Uh, it supports saving and uh, resuming, and uh, there are little icons on the VMU when you're playing, just different pictures of fruit. I, I didn't actually notice. The game might actually take advantage of that in some way, but I, I don't know. I wasn't really thinking. I didn't even... Just, yeah, that would have been a good idea to give you some kind of clue on the VMU screen, but I don't think it actually did that. Uh, the game, another people will ask, uh, does it support VGA? Yes, it does. Um, VGA is the best way to get uh, image clarity out of the Dreamcast. That's what this was being run on. Of course, it's also, in my case, is running from a VGA to a HDMI scaler. 
That way I could record the footage, because recording VGA footage directly is extremely difficult. Uh, so the game, the picture clarity of it is quite crystal clear. It's uh, very nice in that regard. Uh, let's see, what typically, what else do people ask about uh, Dreamcast independent games? Uh, yes, they will ship worldwide. Uh, people always ask, like, you know, do, will they ship to my country? According to them, yes. Um, so it got, I live in the U.S., it got here, no problem. Uh, yeah, so overall, I, I do think this game uh, was pretty fun. Uh, I did, of course, have to stop eventually just because I, I couldn't solve any more of these puzzles. But uh, I, I would recommend if you're into puzzle games, also just to, like I was saying earlier, just support the more unique Dreamcast games. If you want more variety in your Dreamcast games, that's what you have to do is give them just proof. Vote with your wallet, you know, vote with your wallet. Tell them that you want new Dreamcast games that are different genres, not just shmups. If that's one of the issues you have with the Dreamcast scene is that yeah, it's too many shmups. Games like this are the best way to vocalize that. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> this one, I, this puzzle in particular, I didn't think I was going to be able to solve so quickly, but I ended up doing it just fine. You see, there, there is a strategy to this, and it's, I swear, it's, it's more fun than it looks, because it's, you know, it, it's a critical thinking type of game. You have to kind of sit there and process, like, you know, uh, am I, is this going to work or not? Uh, I failed a lot. I didn't show you any of the screens. The only complaint I would really have with it, from a gameplay standpoint, is when you make a move that you can tell you fucked up, like you just you screwed up and you know you're not gonna be able to fix it, it doesn't just automatically tell you you screwed up, it doesn't automatically reset the board, it lets you keep making mistakes until you make enough mistakes that it finally says, okay, you screwed up. Um, I wish it just, if it if you did something that was totally level breaking, that it would just tell you immediately, uh, rather than make you keep doing it, because once you realize the mistake, you're just going to keep hitting A a bunch of times until it gets past it, because there's no point in continuing to try. That would be my, like, if they do another updated version of this, I guess, that would have been my one big uh, critical note to make a change like that. Uh, but yeah, very cool that uh, Retro Gurus finally got a, uh, a game on the Dreamcast in um, a pressed and much more professional capacity. I like that a lot. I hope that they will continue to support the Dreamcast. I hope that you guys will support them uh, for making this game. And I hope you'll take a look at some of those other Dreamcast independent games that are out there. And again, guys, tell me if you want me to do a video about the Dreamcast independent scene, like the current state of it, why I think it's got some juice behind it. I actually did a video, two videos, a couple years ago where I kind of talked about that and I showed a lot of the releases that existed at the time. However, I feel that I could that video is set for an update. Hell, I didn't even have a beard at that point, so there you go. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, the title screen where you enter your name. I got kind of frustrated and just typed A all the way through because I was like, oh, damn it, I didn't win. Um, but yeah, and then of course you can continue or exit. Uh, so that's it, guys. Uh, again, if you're interested in the game, there will be a link in the description. You can go ahead and check it out. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all later.